So hello everyone, this is Lubos Pirkel from CFD Support. I would like to welcome you to the webinar where we are going to show you a comprehensive simulation workflow of a centrifugal fan in TCAE, which is a simulation environment with substantial value at very reasonable costs. I hope everything is working well. We are running live, so in case of any technical problems, it wouldn't be the first or neither the last one. In any case, feel free to contact us and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. The webinar is being recorded and the recording will be later made publicly available. And so, yep. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of shiny stuff to show. So make yourself comfortable. Uh, please do follow carefully the webinar and think about what it is, what you want to improve in your simulations and tell us. Feel free to ask. Uh, at the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. So feel free to ask your questions. We'll do our best to answer them. And uh, maybe it's time to get to the action. So yeah, uh, let me quickly introduce the webinar speakers. So it will be our usual suspects. This is me. Uh, my name is Lubos Pirko and my current job at CFD Support is telling the world about us. And uh, right next door is sitting my colleague, uh, Radek Matsa, who is our head engineer and senior developer and also enthusiastic motorbike rider. And uh, let's check him out. So Radek, are you with us? Hello, Lubosh, and hello, hello to everyone who is watching. Always, always funny, right? At the, at the beginning, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Very funny, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what's what's up? Uh, can you, Radek, can you ensure uh, us, uh, especially our audience, that you you drive or you ride by the rules? Yes, always by the rules. Only on the circuit I drive. Right. Okay. Okay. Fast as possible, but only on yeah. the circuit. Yeah. 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 And in the urban area, right? Fifty kilometers per, per hour all the time. No. No yeah, exceptions, yeah, yeah. right? No exceptions. Only. 50. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I I I, I knew that, but but uh, I'm sure also the audience <laughs> wanted <laughs> wanted to know. Okay. So we play by the rules, Good. and we are also going ahead in our our webinar. So here's the agenda. So uh, yeah, 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 uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, as usual, in, in the first part there will be, well, let's say, a general introduction where I will do my best to not to torch you too much, but but I will say some general information. In the in the second part there will be uh, a live example of, of centrifugal fan, which which is Radek domain so he will, he will show you all the all the important technical aspects of how to how to simulate how to think and what to do to make a comprehensive uh, centrifugal fan analysis and uh, as already mentioned in the last part there will be a QA session dedicated to your questions and our answers so feel free to ask your questions uh, there is uh, i'm sure you will find a uh, a question form you can you can ask your questions anytime during the webinar and uh, we'll do our best to answer your questions at the at the end in, at the last uh, latest session in 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 the webinar um, some of the questions will be answered right away uh, uh, so the, the rest questions will be will be answered uh, via email but you can be sure that all the relevant questions will be will be answered okay uh Okay, a, a quick introduction. So the, the company name uh, is CFD Support. It was founded in 2009. Uh, it's located in Prague, Czech Republic, and uh, at CFD Support we deal uh, with engineering simulations. We primarily focus uh, on the development of CAE software with very high edit value for its users. It's definitely a high-end software with with a lot of features and a lot of capabilities and our clients are CAE professionals who know well what they want. Uh, at CFD support, we are obsessed with the accuracy. Accuracy is uh, of our highest priority. 
And besides accuracy, we are focused on automation, repeatability, and application tailored solutions. We don't believe in general purpose codes. We don't believe that any particular software can accurately simulate everything or that anyone can simulate everything. We do believe that any successful project is a result of focus, skills, experience, maybe practice and, and total dedication to the problem. And uh, we believe, uh, we certainly believe in open source, uh, especially we believe in a combination of open source and professional technical support. So, so far we have invested more than 30 many years uh, of uh, focused team development on top of open source and uh, we have delivered this professional simulation tools and well that's 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 why we are being picked uh, uh, yeah uh, TCAE has successfully merged the benefits of open source with the benefits of commercial codes uh, yeah uh, I guess you know this. This what what we what we present uh, all the time. We we believe that due to the open source nature, uh, it uh, TCA is is unlimited. It's extremely flexible and it's uh, uh, yeah this this way flexible. And due to the commercial code nature, TCA has graphical interface. It has professional technical support. It's it's robust. It's it's accurate it's automated it's well tested it's maintained and it's simply it's it's made to be ready for the industry and uh, this is this is how the graphical interface looks like the user can do here everything from the, from the simulation setup and the simulation run to the detailed post processing of the results and besides this graphical interface the user can also use of course the, the batch mode and TCAE can be run uh, by another software or uh, it can be part of a very comprehensive uh, large uh, loops and uh, it's definitely well suited for 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 uh, different uh, different options uh, technically TCAE consists of software modules that can be combined uh, together according to the particular project needs and and you can view them as standalone software software modules or software parts you know, software pieces i could i can say uh, but all together it creates the the tcae uh, simulation environment that's important and well yeah so so tcae has a modular character and uh, i maybe I'll, I'll go i'll go ahead yeah and um, the user can choose between tcae modules uh, and if needed, uh, the user can combine them with many other software pieces available in the market, right? So the total number of software combinations is almost uh, infinite. And because TCAE has a strong integration ability, it has it has been from the beginning developed in a way to to fit any existing workflow, right? No, no matter what. Uh, no matter if it is combined with commercial codes or in-house codes or with another open source code, uh, TCAE has strong interfaces and it's it's very flexible. So uh, as, as you can imagine, in, in, in a typical enterprise, the engineers usually have some existing workflow already. So TCAE is capable uh, of fitting into it no matter what design tool is used, no matter what CAT tool is used, no matter uh, what meshing system is used, TCAE is, is, TCAE is, is still here to, to fit any workflow and do the simulation and, and deliver the, the results for the user's judgment. So it's, it's very flexible and it, it's modular. So uh, every project can, can, be, can be different in, in a way, if you like. Uh, Okay, uh, TCAE is is definitely unlimited. Uh, there are no limitations on on a number of its users. There are no limitations of hardware installations, and uh, there are no limitations of jobs, uh, cores, uh, etc. So the users can be sure that they can use their resources to the fullest. That's very important. TCAE is definitely very accurate because it's focused. 
right? We, we never say it's for everything. It's, it, it's for specific simulations where, where we can say we are nearly the best and uh, we are ready to prove it. So it's focused, it's aimed on particular applications, it's aimed on turbo machinery, it's aimed on external aerodynamics, these two fields especially. And uh, it's definitely not a general purpose code. And uh, as, as mentioned, we are obsessed with accuracy. There has been done a lot of benchmarks against other codes, against uh, the measurements, and we we have them for public presentations. And uh, once again, we believe that uh, a good job, uh, any job, is is uh, a result of of skills, experience, patience, dedication, and and practice. Right. So it's 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 not a calculator. Right. CFD is not a calculator. It's it's a it's a science. And if it's well supported uh, with a good software, then it then it makes sense and and produces the results. Uh, or good results. Okay, uh, TCA is is perfectly automated. I'm sorry, the TCA is perfectly automated, so it can be used as a as a black box. So you can put the, the data in and pull them out, or you can use it as a fully sophisticated uh, high end software where all the, where all options are open, even even the the uh, the source code of individual open source parts is open and uh, it's always the user who decides uh, how deep to dive uh, into into the problem or not at all uh, okay uh, we believe we have very good technical support uh, it's uh, it's coded in our dna and in the name of our company in the end and after all and uh, so the technical support is is one thing we are proud of. Uh, TCA is delivered for as a native compilation for Windows and Linux. Um, yeah, a remote desktop with, with graphical interfaces is, is possible, and also so batch mode is possible. Of course, it can be run in big loops. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, the user can use automated meshing system, which is which is included in in TCAE, or the external meshes can be loaded. It's always the user's decision. We never push it. And uh, we have very strong post processing, especially for turbo machinery. We have developed a set uh, developed a set of uh, special plugins for Paraview, where you can see, do the meridional averages blade to blade, and also HTML report. You can you can view it and save it and keep it and maintain it. Uh, in a very useful way. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure you know that 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 no software is ever finished. Uh, we we continually uh, gather the requirements from our users and then we we gather them in, into groups and 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 we also mark them and and make priorities and then then we. Uh, implement them and test them and then we release them in the new software releases as you as you can imagine uh, we have we have uh, this this way of thinking of, of horizontal development of, of new tools uh, new new simulation plugins new modules and uh, adding new physics and uh, complexity and in the vertical direction we think in in high tech methods new capabilities new applications of the existing modules that's that's i guess uh, uh, it's obvious and uh, maybe here i, I should mention that the, the current version uh, in in the market uh, is is 21.02 which we released in uh, in February, and uh, at the moment we are uh, in the process of developing the new version. We are we are adding uh, we, uh, once again. We we are, we have changed the graphical interface a little bit. Uh, we have added, uh, for example, this PBS scheduler for 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 clusters. Uh, uh, for example, the real gas module for compressible flow, or there will be. A, uh, very much extended support for the, the heat transfer simulations, uh, heat transfer coefficient and, and one-way uh, data interpolation from fluid to solid and from, from solid to fluid. And uh, you, can, you can play a game with, with, with these combinations. Uh, there will be certainly new CGNS uh, 
uh, support updated both for export and import. And most of all, we are developing a new uh, software module T-Opt, which will, which will enable uh, this DOE uh, simulations of parametric simulations and, and, and the optimization. And it will be extremely third party friendly and uh, it will be a really, really big shift to this, to having having this the opt module we, are, we already have this, a working version. It's the first tests uh, promise a lot, so I hope we will deliver in September the new version 21.09 and uh, the 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 next the very next <laughs> uh, release uh, for the next year will be uh, again uh, a big, but it will be maybe a little surprise. So let's talk about it a little bit later. Uh, okay, if if I normally I, I speak here about about in this this section I speak about the applications, but I'll be very quick. So we we've always been focused on turbo machine simulations and uh, our software and all our knowledge and everything uh, was was aimed on rotating machinery uh, like pumps uh, and and fans uh, and hydro turbines compressors and turbochargers. Uh, later we have combined uh, this, these turbo applications with external aerodynamics. So yeah, TCA is, is definitely very good on these uh, wind turbines and also standard external aero and, and such a combination of the external aero and, and uh, rotating machinery like the aircraft simulations with, with rotating parts, of course, really rotating parts. And also for the internal aerodynamics like valves uh, or hydraulic valves or uh, exhaust manifolds or intake manifolds and prop ship propellers, for example, or even ship propellers with, with ship hulls and uh, drones, a big, big, a big trendy topic uh, from, the, from the last years. And uh, of course, uh, wind wind simulations, uh, especially of, of of forces acting on the on the building surface, and heat comfort and human human comfort and heat transfer. And on top of that, we've created a lot of benchmarks where we show the comparisons of real machines on and, and real measurements with the simulation. So uh, anyone can can pick or contact us and get in touch and make sure that a lot of tests have been done already. We are ready to, to prove uh, again and again, al almost with every new customer or client, uh, we, we prove it again and again, that's, that's uh, accurate. And it's the, the edit value is, is, is huge. Yeah, so today it will be about centrifugal fun, uh, but, but I'm not going to, to torture you anymore. I'll, Ask Radek if he's ready for his part. Radek, Radek, knock, knock. Are you still he with is, us? I'm here. Yeah, still here. <laughs> Very well. So yeah, yeah. Maybe it's it's oh, it's up to me, right? It's up to me to make you an an organizer uh, mm -hmm, or a mm -hmm. presenter. So I did it uh, okay, right so now. Just, so okay. by the experience, we know it takes some time, right? So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so just let me know. I think it, it was quicker than, than usual because okay. I think we can see your screen. So the stage can is you see my screen. Yes, Perfect. we can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lubos. So let me continue in, in this webinar. So after Lubos introduction and pretty detailed information about TCAE, I will start to, to discussing the particle case, which you can find on our web pages, cfdsupport.com in the section TCAE. And here are several examples. And one of the example is the centrifugal, centrifugal fan. So you will find a lot of detailed information about this case. You can find also the reports, which I will be showing you. You will also find the sources, source geometries, and setup for this particular case. So I will quickly introduce the case, and we, then we will show some live uh, live setup, live evaluation, and description of, of what you get from the simulation. So today, the centrifugal fan design will be simulated. 
so usually the first step in this let's say TCA workflow is to is to create is to create a geometry or is to prepare the input geometry yeah, for the simulation because the first step in the in TCA workflow is to create the computational mesh and to create that you need to provide the input geometry in the STL format so you need to somehow and somewhere define define or design the geometry then properly export it and create the STL surface which basically is the let's say it's the discretization of the of the smooth cat model and these STLs holds basically each triangles which builds the which builds the whole geometry, and this this is basically the input for the next steps, which is the meshing part. So in in the current during one of our projects, we have developed a parametric model for the for the centric fugal fan. So one option is to create a yeah, model in in any of your favorite CAD or any CAD CAD design software. Or even you can you can create a script, Python script, which will create everything what you need, connect it to some mesh generators, surface generators, and so on. So the possibilities are pretty wide. You can also use the commercial tools to to design turbo machinery, uh, turbo machinery cases, turbo machinery geometries, and then export it and use it for for the simulation in TCA. So this is the let's say description of of the model. There are many parameters which 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 defines the particle shape of the of the of the centrifugal fan, which includes some suction part, uh, impeller itself, and and the volute or the spiral part. So three parts will be will be then loaded into into TCA or created because usually. For the simulation, CFD-like simulation, you need to always define stators and rotors, and the rotor part are then defined as rotating based on various methods like MRF for the steady state simulation or solid body motion and so on. So we will have three, three components. And based on this information, then, then you need to provide the whole object which is some kind of waterproof and you need to provide also also the the each part separately it means you also you also need to to define the interfaces between each parts so interface let's say between the suction part and rotor part and interface between rotor part and 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 the spiral part so i will i will show you for our case how we created such a such a such a model, but in general, the principles are same for any any other inputs or any other cats. So create the waterproof geometry. Then you need to create interfaces to connect rotating and non-rotating parts, and export the STLs of, of 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 the given part, like what is the inlet outlet, what are the rotating parts, blades, blades, hubs, hubs, shrouds spirals, walls, and and so on. So let's go for that. So maybe I will, as an example, I will show you what what we did. So we have created a geometry builder, which is based on based on Salome. So it is a Python script which which defines the, which defines the parametric model, and then by a simple script and by simple configuration file which i can show you for example you can define define the parameters based on which the geometry is created and then you can run it and because tc is fully automated so you can put it into the into the workflow like you can connect it to the optimization tool or you can create for example 30 fixed designs and then simulate all of them and and look for for the best design and so on so you can change any any parameters here, and then then I hope I will be able to run it from scratch. So I will I will go for the TCA, the current version, and for this particle generation, I will open the the shell link, so the command line, using which I can I can run some base script which 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 triggers 
all the all the steps which are needed to create to create the geometry for our Salome script. So let me quickly do that. Trust me that it works. So I will just locate our case, which is on D drive, webinars, centrifugal fun and geometry builder. And now I will run the base script all run, which simply calls the Salome with the, with the proper script. And I will provide as the input parameter, the Python file, sorry, it's just the, the parameter, file with the parameters, which I have shown here. And I hope that's all. So now on the background, the Salome script is, is running. So the Salome is one of our favorite tool, open source tool to create the geometries or to modify, modify, modify geometries. Inside the Salome, you can also create the surface meshes or even some tetrahedral volumetric meshes. But for this case, we, we basically create the, the model, the continuous model, parameterized and then the surfaces are are uh, discretized using the um, netgen netgen solver which is part of the of the salome and this triangulation is then exported as stls and these stls are then used are then used as the info, input for tcae so then we see that new stl uh, stl folder is created here and all the parts, necessary parts, which builds the whole geometry is saved here. Just to show you how it works, you can it basically also create the, the Salome project. So maybe I will, I would like to show you this. So I will run Salome, Salome here, and then I will load the project and basically it, it, it creates the geometry based on our based on our parameters. So let's go here, webinar, geometry builder. I think here is the project. So, so there are several steps to, to create the whole model, but to, for example, here is the final, final, final model for the, for the impeller, the solid model, which will be then used for, for the finite element analysis. And for those analysis, we just need an object which defines the solid of the, of the impeller. And then the rest, there are several parts which creates, which create the, the, let's say the volute and suction and all together are then meshed here and exported as STLs. So each part of, of, of the model. And as a result, we, we we have this STL folder with all the all the parts. So I will just show you. Okay, so I will load all of them. And this is this is the input, which is perfectly compatible with TCAE because because it's waterproofed. Each part is defined separately so we can based on them based on them we can define what is the inlet what is the outlet and so on so this can be used for for tcae so let me open the tca here so from now on we will work in tca directly so the input is is ready so as lubosh already mentioned so, so first option is to is to create the stls and use them for the for the mesh generation or you can use any of any external tool to create the computational mesh and then load this mesh. So I will bo borrow the, the already preset case. So TCAE stores the configuration file into the TCAE file format, which can be directly loaded into the GUI. The GUI is implemented di directly in Paraview, so everything you have only one interface, both to defining or both for definition of the of the problem the same for the running the simulation and the same also for the post-processing 
so you can stay within one GUI for the for the whole workflow. Okay, so first steps, as you can see, there are now three activated modules. The first one is the T-Mesh in which the mesh is defined and generated, then TCFD in which the CFD simulation is preset, and TFEA in which the finite element analysis is preset. So I will first describe describe the mesh generation. So there are several menus because we are doing both CFD and FEA analysis. So we have CFD and FEA mesh. In the general, basically you 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 tell which which kind of meshes will be generated or you you want to generate. So here we have CFD and FEA mesh, some scale factor which defines the import or input units because some cats uh, exports in the millimeters, some in inches and so on. So you will need to define what is the source source unit for the input. Then I will quickly describe describe how the uh, how the geometry or, or the computer, computational mesh is preset. So first is some general general setup for the rotation reference frames because for turbo machinery it is one of the one of the important parameters. So the axis of rotation. So it also then defines some some connection or some geometrical geometrical properties. For example, for segments, which can be also simulated for axial funds, for example, and mainly for for the rotation and all the let's say all the transformation or connection between between the axial inlets and radial outlets and so on, which is automatically done on the background. Then there is component section. Basically here you define you define the components. So as I already mentioned, one component is some meaningful part of your of your whole design. So usually stat, it is split into the stator part and rotor parts. And the stator parts can be, for example, also split to, to parts which is connected to rotor, like inlet pipes or suctions, and the outlet parts like the volute or additional extensions and so on, depending on the on the design. Each component is, is defined separately. So here, for example, we have the component one. So if I Oh, okay, if I go to the CFD geometry source and the multi-block inspector, so I can can show you just just the inlet part, and here this is the input for the F, F for the mesh for the FA analysis, so I can get rid of it by these I buttons. So basically, okay, uh, FEA geometry here. So this is the suction suction part, which consists only from the three parts like inlet, outlet interface, and the wall. Then we have the impeller part, which let's say consists of of the inner part of the of the of the impeller and and the inlet and outlet part, which defines which defines the boundaries between the stator and rotors. And then we have the we have the spiral part. So as as I said, here in the component section, all these parts are defined by 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 let's say definition or locating the STL directory or the directory with the STLs. Then all the STLs are loaded from this directory, and you can enable it by by um, by defining the particle type. So therefore, it is it is important to to have the separate STLs because then you can define what is the rotating part, what is non-rotating part. You can define what is the inlet, outlet, outlet interfaces, and so. And additionally, you can also play with the mesh refinement, yeah, because the refinement is then done by let's say some kind of level of refinement based on the background mesh size. So for those who are familiar with the snappy x mesh then you know what this parameter parameters means for those who don't know we have addition we have different webinars which describe the mesh generation into more detail so this is not the purpose of this webinar so basically step by step you you define all the parts 
you de you define the mesh re mesh refinement by let's say but by iterations let's say you start with the rough mesh you check if everything is properly set if the mesh is generated properly and then you can start to refining the important parts and so on and if all the parts are let's say catched or the shape is catched properly if not you can increase increase the level of refinement and so on similarly then you can enable after after you are satisfied with the mesh you can you or you should enable the lay, boundary layers parameters and and so on then the connection is done for example if, if you set it you you can connect each or you have to connect each components by by the interfaces if you right click on the given part you can then define the connection to the to the proper part, part on the other side of the next component and if everything is done properly you you should see something like this some topology graph so you can see it's like a simple maze you, you from the inlet you need to go to the outlet properly using the solid lines which shows you that your that your topology and your connection is is done properly uh, if i made any mistake for example make a bad connection then you will see that something is wrong and and you know what to do in the next steps how to connect each part together all right so this is about the meshing of the cfd mesh maybe in the sh in in few words then we have we have the FAA mesh, which is much simpler. You just provide one STL with the solid. So this is the input geometry, the solid of the or the STL of the solid, and then the the NetGen, NetGen um, algorithm requires just a few parameters like maximum size of tetrahedra, minimum size of tetrahedra, tetra, tetrahedron, and some optimization steps. So higher number should give a better quality of the mesh but also takes longer time takes longer time to generate such a mesh and that's all then you can go then you can go for the for the let's say the the main main item in the pipeline browser which holds which holds some buttons to to run or to to manage the simulation itself so after that you can click right and mesh all button for example so i it will take several minutes so i did it in in advance so after hitting the hitting the mesh all button you will see all the if everything goes well you should see the green green boxes here and after the meshing you are able to visualize the mesh so you can just keep the CFD mesh highlighted and then you can visualize each part of the of the generated mesh and in the same way for the FEA analysis the mesh for the FEA analysis okay so this is the first step yeah important part is sorry it's not CFD I need to click FEA mesh yeah and this is the FEA mesh so first part is to provide a good quality STLs with the proper topology and then to define a proper mesh for the simulation. What is the proper mesh is a general question, depends on the application and so on. So simply you should make, make it as, as fine as possible and, and the boundary or inflation layer as nice as possible, but you should keep in mind also what is your, what is your hardware availability and how long you can wait for the results so finer mesh needs more time for for simulation of course so after this step is done you can go for the setup of of the cfd simulation so i will go very quickly so there are standard let's say parameters to set up the simulation first is the simulation type because we focus on the on, on the different turbo machineries and we always would like to deliver a tailored solution for that. So definitely pump 
and fun has a different let's say approach to 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 what to, to be evaluated and, and how to be evaluated so therefore this general parameter basically define the purpose of of the of the simulation so here we have a fun fun option then in the physics you define some physical physical parameters like time management steady state or steady state plus transient which means it runs the, the transient transient dynamic mesh simulation uh, which is initialized by the steady state results here you define the speed lines and speed points so within one simulation you can you can simulate different revolution speeds for example for compressors or or for funds which are running at a constant rpms you can define several points basically you can def you can simulate the fun at different flow rates for example and then you will nicely see at the at the end uh, the performance map fluid properties you should decide if if you would like to simulate or if the if the if the fun needs to be simulated in a compressible or incompressible mode so the decision is made based on the, in the on the velocity speed and on the compressibility so this this fun is simulated as compressible to which standard parameters are uh, or need needs to be set in the multi physics you can enable some additional let's say additional features you can you can add some passive scalar simulation or porosity zones you can calculate age for for this human comfort simulation for example or including gravity but i think it, it is ap ap applicable just for some buoyancy flow and so so this is for standards turbo machine simulation is usually off turbulence model you can choose from from this from this menu or you can also enable any other any other any other turbulence model which open form provides rotation reference frame so you have always two stator and rotors and the important one is the rotor and you need to provide the rotating speed and the dire direction is is given by the sign sign symbol and it follows the right hand rule so in this case if your if your thumb on your right hand points the axis direction which is y in this case so then your cross fingers points the positive direction of the rotation so here we need to provide the negative negative value in the simulation there are many sections for setting the solver and some let's say processing features so solver number of processors you can use as many processors you have there is no limitation first or second order scheme usually start with the first and if everything works well then go for second averaging window because always the solution for a complex geometry geometries even if it is a steady state solution it is it can have an oscillating behavior so you should you should always you should need to to smooth out this oscillation to get really stable and and constant solution at the end so therefore the averaging window is applied here because your your solution is averaging so you would like to also see the averaged quantities at the end to be visualized like averaged temperature averaged velocity average pressure so you can enable by this uh, by this checkbox right average quantities and which quantities you would like to store efficiency probes important for the efficiency and other other parameters evaluation so basically there are three let's say three parameters to set what is the inlet what is the outlet and and what are the torque patches so usually rotating parts from which the torque is evaluated okay then then you can you can set some forces probe usually for external flows to evaluate some forces coefficients or forces on a particular object you can define the probes which what is the probe probe is the point somewhere inside your simulated simulated domain 
and it will then follow the particle value of the given fields in the particle point. So then you can anytime post process or see how uh, you, know, you can see the evolution of the given quantity at a certain certain point within within the mesh. Conver convergence checks. So if you if you would like to enable these checks, then then it follows some rules. Let's say it follows the average efficiency, and if the average efficiency is oscillating less than I don't what is it? It's a half 0 0.005, so it's 0.05 percent. If it's oscillating less than this threshold, relative threshold to the absolute value of the effic efficiency over the averaging window, then the simulation is stopped before the maximum iterations are reached. Then you can preset some controls for the for the solver, like the relaxation factors, if you know what to do, and and the, some boundings. Yeah, so what is the expected minimum and maximum pressure and other quantities? So usually you can you can add some safe thresholds for which you know that you can't get higher or lower values. So it will stabilize the solver. And then you can also provide some absolute and relative tolerances for the linear solver itself for each quantity, which can be set here. Boundary conditions, which basically define de define uh, define your uh, your conditions you you would like to simulate. So, for example, typically for for the funds, you can simulate the volumetric flow rate. So, usually starting from the highest flow rate to the lowest. So here. The simulation starting from 35 cubic meters per second and the last point is 5 cubic meters per second. Total temperature at the inlet, so some ambient 20 degrees. Turbulent energy intensity at, at, at the inlet, hydraulic diameter and some reference ve <coughs> velocity from which the proper <coughs> sorry turbulence quantities are are evaluated. So the same for the outlet. At the outlet, we need to, to provide just the just the fixed pressure or fixed mean pressure boundary condition. So here we set the ambient condition at the <clears throat> at the outlet. For the walls, you can you can define slip or no slip boundary condition. Let's say for the velocity interaction. So always for the rigid wall, we use no slip wall. But let's say for some artificial extension of or or something like similar, you can you can go for a slip boundary condition. So we don't need to take care about the friction on the walls. Yeah. For the for the temperature, you can set adiabatic wall or some kind of fixed temperature or or the derivation of it, some fixed power or fixed heat flux or fixed HTC heat transfer coefficient on the wall. The, the interfaces connection, you can set either AMI, which is a frozen or the like boundary condition, or mixing plane, which is a stage, which is more proper, pro, more proper for the for the let's say the periodic periodic cases. And the initial condition, you need to provide just some some reasonable value how to initialize the first first point on the speed line. And the last last task is to set the post processing feature so you can you can modify or you can adjust the final report like favorite units for the report and you can define some additional automatical visualization like blade to blade view which we which I will show you then in the report or meridian meridional average which makes an meridional average on the <clears throat> the rotating part and you can average given quantity C1, for example, uh, total pressure. Surface samples for some additional post-processing or to export to, to your own tools, like map for, for which can be used for mapping. So you can save, for example, I don't know, you can you would like to save the pressure pressure distribution on the impeller hub, for example. So af, after the simulation is finished. This is this is stored. You can also enable writing into the CGNS format for post-processing in different 
I don't know, with different tools like Paraview. And you can also write the surface quantities for, for mapping on external FEA analysis tool. Yeah, so relative pressure, <clears throat> let's say for, for forces evaluation. Okay, and basically that's all. Then you can run the simulation, but before I do that, I will set up also the FEA analysis. So let's go quickly through the FEA setup. So in the simulation, the main part is set here in the FEA analysis. So what you can enable, you can enable thermal analysis. So how the, how the heat goes through the solid. You can enable the fluid structure interaction, which we need here. So the fluid structure inter interaction enables a one-way coupling yeah, from the CFD simulation to the to the solid, not vice versa at the moment. And you you basically tell which parts you would like to map. So I would like to map all all the impeller parts. So onto the solid. I would like to uh, yeah I would like to rotate. So I would like to also include the rotate rotating effects on the solid. And I would like to map relative pressure for computing forces, which is always so safer. And I would like to use the average quantities. Yeah, so average pressure, if there is some oscillating, I don't need the last iteration, but I, I need a, really the average solution for the mapping. You can enable the gravity, but it, it gives a little, little effect. So uh, I don't need to enable it for this application. And I would like to see also the model anal analysis, yeah, what, is the, what is the model frequencies and so this can be also simulated. Then for the solver, again, you can set the number of processor, you can set the linear algebra, algebra solver, usually direct. If there is some problem with direct, you can switch to iterative. Finite element order first or second, so usually go for second. And for some, let's say, larger deformation, if you expect, you should enable the nonlinear equations. Okay, the last few menus includes the material, pro ma material properties, so I think it's clear, uh, and boundary condition. So for, if you would like to simulate just the, just the displacement and stress analysis, you need to provide the fixed region, re region for that. So I will show just the solid. And if you click here, yeah, this is a cylinder. So you can you can fix all the points which are intersected by this by this cylinder volume. Yeah. So all the all the nodes on the FEA mesh will be fixed uh, inside the cylinder will be will be fixed. And for example, for let's say some thermal analysis, you can pr prescribe the temperature boundary conditions yeah, here. So we we don't need the thermal analysis here so we don't need any fixed quantity here and the final report only two parameters so units for the stress and units for the displacement and basically that's all if everything is set we can switch okay, i will go to my preset case where the mesh is already simulated and you can basically hit if everything is preset, then you can hit run all and everything will be run automatically. And when you go step by step, like in this case, you need to first run the CFD analysis and then FEA analysis. Okay, so during the simulation, you can follow any quantity which is available. So I can, for example, open the new layout here. You can you can enable this line chart view. So let's say I will, I will create several several sections. So line chart view in all the sections. And then if you click here into the TCFD, if you expand this browser, pipeline browser, then for example, here I would like to follow the residuals. Yeah, so I can see residuals here. Here I would like to see the quantities. So let's say, yeah, here is the here is the mass flow. Again, I don't need the mass flow now. So if you switch to display part, so I would like to see, for example, efficiency. Yeah, at the be beginning, usually the, the the quantities or the values, absolute values are pretty wild. 
so if you go to the view you can focus the the axis to some custom range so usually the value should be between 0 and 1 of course so efficiency here and what can be additional interesting parameters is for example the total pressure drop which is important parameter for the for the funds so here is the parameter delta p dot and usually it is clever to watch the the instant values and the average values yeah so this <clears throat> the thick line is the average values and uh, uh, and the, in this case the green line is is the instant values and basically you can add, add in, additional view so we can follow what what you need <clears throat> Okay, what I can show you, you can anytime if you if you watch it live, you can anytime skip to next point if you see that your point is already converged. But it, I think it is applicable only, let's say, for the testing and adjusting the first simulation because you you can't watch online eight hours <laughs> to to wait for for the proper point to trigger next next steps, for example, to speed up the simulation. But but it is possible. So if I now click uh, skip, where is it? Yeah, here skip skip point. You can skip it, and the next point is simulated. But I need to be sure that the first point is 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 converged, which <clears throat> which is not in my case. What is also a good feature? You can you can view the current step, so you can see what is happening at the at the current step. So you can click view current step, you can click apply and, and the current values are loaded. Yeah, so it's very, it's the second point after very few iterations. So after 29 iteration of the second point, so this, these are the results. So you can really watch it live. You can anytime delete it from this, in this pipeline browser and for example visualize the current point now yeah and then you can generate the report or you can anytime anytime generate a light report to watch some additional parameters in the in the report and at the end you can generate a full report and similarly for the FEA analysis so run the simulation generate a FEA report and show show the results Okay, so just imagine that we jump jump in time and at the end we can see something like this. So the, the bars are are filled by the done and and the HTML HTML reports are, are available. So let's go quick, quickly through the HTML report. So we have both reports for CFD analysis and, and the FEA analysis. So this one is for the FEA analysis. Maybe if I hit F12 button, can be expanded. Maybe not in here, I guess. All right, so I will keep it in this, this view. So at the beginning, yeah, you can see nice rendering of your machine. Then some basic simulation statistics like flow rate to see if everything converge well from the first side, residuals, basic parameters about, about the mesh, about the simulation. Uh, you can also check some simulation score and average quantities, how many processors and the physical model. And then there are several section which, which introduces the particle quantities. So fun characteristics which shows you <clears throat> the flow and compression number, typical parameters for funds, important one efficiency and and uh, convergence of the efficiency. So you should always check if everything is somehow con converged, constant, and if there are no, no big oscillation. Of course, for the, let's say, for the points which are further from the best efficiency point, then the oscillation may occur higher because it's far from the optimal optimal solution and optimal flow. So the flow becomes 
more more and more wide if you go farther from the best efficiency point so then then you should see higher oscillation than for for best efficiency point where the flow is is the smoothest Similar, similar similar parameters or section and presentation of the results for torque, for axial force, radial force, uh, total pressure difference. <clears throat> so you can see where where the where the maximum pressure occurs and so on. Similar similarly for total pressure ratio in this parameter, total pressure per interfaces. So we can watch the pressure on the given interfaces. For example, after the impeller for each for each point, same for the convergence and how the let's say profile path or the, yeah the pressure profile path from the beginning from the inlet to the outlet, where is the rise, where is the drop, and so on. The same for the total temperature difference, total temperature per interfaces, yeah, and same for the velocity magnitude and what i would like to show you at the at the end is for example these blade to blade views which is nice visualization to have the first impression about the about the topology of the flow so this is the blade to blade view and the span the, the span is the relative position between the hub and shroud so this is the 10 percent near the hub of the overall size or width between hub and shroud for the point one. So we can see that if we go to the stall point, yeah, where the flow, <clears throat> where the flow rate goes down, then higher and higher recirculation areas appear. And for the last point, for the lower flow rate, you can see that this <clears throat> that the solution is or the flow is pretty wild. Similarly, for additional spans, so this is just in the middle. So again. You can see what is happening near the tongue area, let's say, and for which point <clears throat> the recirculation occurs and how it how it, how the recirculation are ex is expanding, for example. So pretty nice view for the first site analysis, what is happening where and possibly where some modification of the of the geometry should be should be placed or should be focused on. Right, so this is the CFD CFD report, and the same we can we get for the FEA report. So again, so view on the solid, basic parameters about the simulation, about the material material, material used, solver, mesh statistics, how many elements are used for the simulation, and then for each point we can get the information about the static analysis, so some maximum minimal displacement, maximum stresses, frequency analysis. So we have defined six, first six frequencies. So we can see the, the frequencies and some, some participation factors, so some deformation for the given frequency and model and of effective model mass. Yeah, so so this we have here, but we also would like to see some nice, nice images. So let let me maybe start with the with the FEA analysis. So you can go to your simulated case. So for example, here in the into the TFEA, here are the results, and you can load this VTU file, or you can simply go to the uh, to the manager. And click here, show CFD or show FEA results. So any option is many options are av available how to visualize the results. Okay, maybe meanwhile, oh, it is already there. So this is this is the simulation mesh, and I can visualize what I need. So for example, the the displacement analysis. So here you can see the displacement in millimeters. The distribution of it. What what we always like is to visualize the uh, visualize the deformation by this filter warp by vector, and you can magnify the the deformation by the factor of ten. Let's say 
you know, if you if you if you, if you see it, okay, now it's loading the deformation, and yeah, you can see that now the blades are deform deformed together with the hub and shroud, so you can now nicely imagine the shape or the particle shape of the deformation. You can visualize the stress. So the stress, okay, maybe if I if I focus by this by this eye, yeah, so the maximum stress, or maybe so this is not maybe this case well, was not converged properly. Okay, so you can go for the stress for each for the given frequency analysis. So the displacement for each frequency mode. So I think these are some side modes, but the first, which is symmetric, is the, is the usually the mode which is interested for us. And yeah, basically you can you can do what you what you need to visualize. So this was the FEA anal analysis, and the same you can do for the CFD analysis. So if you hit this show CFD results, you can load. You can load the whole mesh, and again you can play with the nice visualizations. So let's say what we can do just quickly. I like to always keep the the solid, so I will keep the solid, and I will <clears throat> in the in the display menu you can decrease the opacity. And now, now, for example, I can apply any any filter which is available here. For example, a slice. So I can make a slice just in the middle of the wheel. So let's say here. Okay, on the slice I can visualize the velocity. For example, the relative velocity. So it is the magnitude of the velocity, absolute velocity absolute velocity outside the rotating parts and relative velocity inside the rotating parts. I can enable here the surface LIC visualization filter and in the display, is it in the display? Yeah, sure. I would like to use the relative, <clears throat> relative field to really go along the blade yeah, to see really, really the streamlines like we are sitting on the, on the impeller. And maybe for the last last simulated point for the low flow rate, we should see <clears throat> some yeah higher recirculation areas. <clears throat> yeah, so you can combine really what what you want. You can also add the three D streamlines, which is here. So you can define some random random source by let's say the point source. So all the so I will put it, let's say here. So it creates how many? 100 points for which will be used to to compute the streamlines. So I can click apply. Maybe you can increase the radius to get more range and add more points. Okay, now I have more. I will add length longer streamlines okay for example i get i will get rid of this sphere and what i'd like is to for example render as tubes and increase the line width okay and now and additionally we can set some opacity yeah and now we have a combination of the slice and surface streamlines on the slice and and the solid 3d 3D lines. Well, yeah. So we can combine any any other visualizations. Yeah, you can you can, for example, see you can, for example, see just the streamlines visualized by the vectors. So let's say you can generate a surface somewhere with surface vectors here. So I will create surface vectors on this slice and then I can create the glyphs like the simply show me the arrows. Okay, it's too much. And 
it will be scaled by relative velocity. Okay, let me click here. So maybe it's too much, too, too, too short. All right. Okay. Glyph. Uh, and all right, maybe I was too fast. Yeah, but sim similarly, some somewhere by this way. Okay, so I think I made something in the wrong way. Definitely. Okay, okay, I'm not sure. Sorry. Maybe. Okay, I'm not sure what I did, <laughs> which is not good. But definitely, you can you can visualize the flows like by, by the vector, just by the vectors on the on the surface. Yeah, so you can really play with the results as you want, and you have really free hands to 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 what to visualize. And maybe the last point to mention, because it can be can be nicely automated because everything is stored on the disk. Yeah, so if you go to the TCFD and post-processing, so all the files are stored in this efficiency final file. So we can anytime open in the Excel sheet or, or load by, by some Python script or any script and to be connected to any, any other tool, which will then decide like optimization tool and so on. So they are really quite um, unlimited, maybe uh, almost unlimited options how to how to create your workflow because every, everything is available from the GUI through through the just console command console command so you can pretty define your work workflow by the script you can then pick up the values you need to provide for example for optimization and <clears throat> and create a closed loop to to run everything everything in an automated way. Okay, so I think that's all from my side today. So, so Lubos, are you there? Do you think yeah. I have told everything what I should? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Maybe I can yeah. continue for hours, right? But we have to stop somewhere. <laughs> No, no, it's perfect, Radek. Thank you, thank you for your part. It was, it was great. It was real hands-on experience, and and it, it was live. That that's always valuable to see something which is not like pre, pre prepared, right? But but it's really, really, really live and and like it's engineering really work, right? <laughs> At least for me, it would be valuable to see it how it works. Uh, okay, uh, Radek, thank you for this, and now it's it's mm -hmm. time. For, for Q and A, I, I suggest we will stay on with, on your desktop, mm -hmm. but okay. we can we can together comment. Uh, so I would like ask the audience to to ask the questions, and we'll do our best. We will pick the most like representative questions, mm -hmm. and and we will answer them. And uh, so, Radek, you can you can take a look uh, if, if you see some question and think about it. In the I will start with mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm with an idea which always comes to my mind when I when I when I follow through uh, your your presentation I'd like to I'd like to make sure the audience that all those settings you, you can do it just just one time right you, you do it just mm -hmm, one, mm -hmm. one time and uh, once you have it have it uh, preset you, you just have the configuration file and then you can just uh, follow through with, with all the geometries, and if your if your geometry is reasonably uh, the same, similar, you can run mm -hmm. the simulations and run and run and run the simulations all the time, all the all, as as many times as you as you as you like, and it's likely okay and it's it's likely correct, right? So it's mm -hmm. there's no need to set everything from scratch all the time, yes. right? You have your your yes. like yes. best things. Your, your best how tos your your best geometry uh, configuration file and then you you just use it right so it's not that difficult and not that complicated of, of course from time to time you make some some adjustments but 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 oh, i i would say very little not not that much 
mm-hmm. uh, as long as your, of course, your case is similar, right? Uh, uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to mention. Yeah, uh, yeah. it always comes to my mind. Uh, anyway, uh, let's let's take a look. So I, I think I can start with with, with to answer answering questions uh, those those simple ones. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, for example, <laughs> Ocean is asking uh, if uh, TCFD can handle periodic boundary conditions and simulate only one blade. Uh, for this, I would suggest yes, exactly, Radek. I would suggest to take a look on our website. There are uh, quite some examples where you can where you can see. Uh, of course, yes, mm-hmm. sure. You can you can simulate just one blade, a periodic segment, which is it's not only possible; it's even encouraged to to, for example, in in such cases of, for example, axial machines, it's it's a it's a first choice. Of course, you simulate just a periodic segment of 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 a cylinder, basically. So that's for sure. It's not only possible; it's even encouraged. Um, um, Okay, Anesh is asking, what's the difference between CFD mesh and FEA mesh? Are they both out of single mesh uh, generation uh, stage? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the, the 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 approach is a little bit different, right? Because the 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 first choice, the automated tool for CFD uh, mesh generation is Snappy Hex mesh. Mm-hmm. While for the FEA mesh uh, creation, uh, we use NetGen, right? Like uh, for for mm-hmm. even for for the volume mesh, we use we use NetGen. So the approach is a little bit different, but it's certainly automated, and uh, it's certainly we we consider it to be to be uh, well enough and working uh, well and and very stable. So so T mesh takes care of of both CFD and FEA mesh. Yes. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, gee, yeah. <laughs> I, I'll answer. I'll, I'll do my best to answer this. This was the difference between open foam and TCAE. Uh, well, it's uh, uh, both simple and difficult to answer. So first <laughs> of all, uh, uh, it's based uh, right. It it TCAE uses open foam, right? It it obviously uses open foam, but uh, it's it's much more, right? Because it's simulation environment, while while open foam is is a tool, right? It's it's a, mm-hmm. a tool with a, a wheel, but but uh, this is, <laughs> the TCAE is a simulation environment, so which which is different. The number one difference is the graphical interface, uh, the automation, and the best best practice settings. Uh, maybe. Well, we we deal with with uh, with open foam for 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 a couple of years here, and and we uh, we over the time we realized it's it's uh, it's for normal people it's 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 unusable in in my opinion it's 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 nearly dead end uh, for for normal people for 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 usage it's it's extremely user user unfriendly and or in in practice people need graphical interface and they need a process they need a clear process which which has some some guidelines and maintenance and everything and my last point about this we've spent more than 30 many years uh, of team development uh, on top of open form on top of open source pieces so you can be sure that a lot of work has been done and uh, that's that's the difference I, w- I would say in 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 a in a, in a quick quick short uh, description yeah uh, well uh, Radek, do you see one you, you'd like to answer or well basically you have answered already all the question i i have prepared in mind so uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, let's continue one. because we. Yeah. I think we. we, we it, it, it's still some 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 space uh, mm-hmm. to answer. So so Frank uh, Victor is is asking, uh, uh, is automation possible via Python scripts? Uh, yes, sure. You, we we norm, Yeah, of course. Yes, you can. You can. Uh, uh, it's, it's just a simple question and simple answer. Yes. <laughs> um, 
okay uh, can we import uh, other file formats then uh, from 3d modeling uh, from a uh, question from ramesh uh, no uh, it's it's uh, this 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 uh, system and uh, this automated uh, approach we use you it, it only uses uh, the the stl files which is which is by the way answering the, the question from alexia uh, so yeah so the, the system uh, uses uh, stl files uh, and of course you can you can import the the ready made meshes right the the, the 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 you can import the external meshes from fluent gns mm -hmm. and uh, also the external open form mesh that's for sure you can do uh, but as a as a cat input it's it's uh, stl files uh, right because we have good experience with with stl files it's the i, I would say it's the lowest level of or lowest possible level of of geometry information it's a reasonably simple it's 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 it, but it, and that that's safe right because what's uh, as simple as possible it's safe for for usage the the rules are clear and and we are, we are safe there and uh, maybe in the future we'll we'll do something about it but then then we 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 are, we are very uh, careful to step on, on the ground of you know this EGS and step files of parametric things because they they're not so clear and all the all the uh, many many problems would would appear for sure. Uh, okay, I I can't see um, any much more questions. Uh, so. Uh, Radek, what do you think? Do we are we are we? Yeah, done here? Think, yeah, I think we are done. <laughs> At okay. The moment. Okay. So so I'll I'll, I'll I'm I'm taking back uh, mm -hmm. the presentation yeah. to 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 conclude, basically. So I hope you can see my screen. Um, yeah. So this was uh, the Q and A session actually. So we we answered a little bit. Uh, anyway, uh, feel free to ask your questions if you have one or or more of them. Feel free to ask your questions. We'll do our best to answer them. Your feedback is very important to us, so we we mean it. Ask your questions, ask questions, and we'll we'll do our best to answer them. And we are approaching to to the end of of this this webinar. Here's the the second last slide. Uh, here you can see some some brands. Uh, uh, of, of those who already share our visions with us, who are who are already our clients, and um, we believe that you will you will become our client too. So feel free to get in touch. We'll do our best to make you happy. It's our job and also also a pleasure. So yeah, maybe Radek, is there anything we you would you would add for the very last? Well, only I would like to add thank you for watching and we are looking forward to be with contact with you and discuss your particular application and your goals and and yeah, do not hesitate to contact us. We are here for you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, Radek, thank you. And I would like to thank the audience to all, all of you, all of them who, all of you who, who, who resisted until, until the end. Of this webinar uh, there will be a recording available uh, we'll upload it to, to our youtube channel and everywhere else so yeah thank you for coming feel free to tell us what we can do for you stay tuned and bye bye for now